And welcome to Cooking with Nick, the cooking class that will show you how to prepare a quick and healthy four-course dinner in a short amount of time. There's nothing more important than eating dinner with your family as often as possible. With a little preparation and some quick tips from me, you will always have time to make dinner for your family. So if we're all ready to cook, let's get started on our meal for today. Okay, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to do this a little bit out of order. Um, we're going to have our soup is going to be a red bean and Swiss chard soup. And I'll, similar to some of the soups we've made before, but I'll show you how you can make variations on that. Uh, I thought a soup would be nice since it's so cold out. <laughs> It'd be nice to have soup. Then we're going to do a chopped caprese salad. Caprese salad is usually, you've seen it with sliced tomatoes, sliced fresh mozzarella, and fresh basil, and then it's kind of all layered together and then has olive oil on top of it. Then I'm going to show you how to make a chopped one that you can make way ahead of time, have it in your refrigerator, and ready to go, and uh, be real quick. Uh, the baked pasta primavera is going to be a layered uh, pasta dish. It's going to have lots of vegetables in it. This is a vegetarian version of it. I'll show you, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about how you can uh, add meat to it, make it heartier, or however you want to do that. So remember, these recipes are just basic recipes for you to improve on as you use it. For dessert, we're going to make a Sambuca uh, fruit parfait. Uh, if you've never had Sambuca, has anybody never had Sambuca or know what it is? Okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's an anise-flavored Italian liqueur. Okay, it comes in, comes in clear or comes as black Sambuca. You know, usually you have it in coffee. Uh, it's, it's got a licorice taste to it, okay, so uh, kind of like ouzo, you know, if you've had that before, it's, but it's a little smoother than ouzo, I think. So we're going to use that to macerate the fruit, uh, let the fruit absorb all that Sambuca flavor, then we're going to layer it with some pound cake, we're gonna, you, know, you know if I'm making a dessert, it's easy. So, so we're going to layer it and make a little parfait with that. So that's going to be the way we're going to operate. What we're going to start with, because it has to go in the oven, and remember when you're planning the meal, there are certain things you're not going to do everything in order because you want to make sure the things that take, have to go in the oven are going to be in the oven and be ready when you're ready to eat. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the entree. We're going to do the, the pasta primavera first. Then I'm going to do the soup, get the soup going. Okay, and then I'll do the salad. So first thing you're going to eat is soup. Okay, then by the time you finish your soup, the pasta should be ready. So you'll have pasta and you'll have a little salad. And then we'll make the dessert. Okay. Everything's going to take under 40 minutes, believe me, so it'll work. And again, let me remind you that when uh, you know how I cook, if you've been here before, uh, sometimes I follow the recipe and sometimes I don't, So because I'm not used to using a recipe, so I had to go through and try all these things and make sure they all work. So they do work. If you're the kind of person who has to follow a recipe, they do work. Okay, so we're going to start with the, the, the pasta dish, the entree. And that would be on the second page of your menus. This has a lot of vegetables in it. You could adjust the vegetables any way you want. Okay, what I'm going to do in here, this is about uh, maybe about a pound and a quarter of, uh, of ziti. Okay, and what I did, again, if you know you're going to be using pasta sometime during the week, just go ahead and pre-cook it. Cook it about three or four minutes less than what it says on the package. So if it says 11 minutes, you cook it for about eight or seven. Put it in a baggie like this. Put a little bit of olive oil in it, you know, and just stick it in your refrigerator. When you're ready to use it, then you're ready to go. Okay? If you need to, uh, if you're going to eat it just as a pasta dish and not bake it or anything, just put it in some boiling water, cook it for the remaining three minutes, throw your sauce on it, and you're all set to go. Saves you a lot of time. Okay? So this is, that's what I have in here. So I'm going to start layering this. And I'm going to put one layer in the bottom of this pan. Okay, so just so we have one layer. It's going to be kind of like a, like a, like a lasagna thing. Okay, Let me put that over there because we're going to get back to that. That's going to go on top. So what we want to do is get all of our uh, ingredients that we're going to use. So I'm going to use uh, some mushrooms. And I bought, these are our uh, baby Bella mushrooms. You know, I, they're a little hardier if you're going to bake them. They hold up a little longer, okay? So we're going to put half of the vegetables 
on this layer, and then we're going to put another layer with the other half. Okay? So we're going to take half of these mushrooms, and just sprinkle them on. Everything's going in raw. We're not cooking anything. The only thing cooked in here right now is the pasta. And that's not all cooked all the way through. Okay? So we just get those in there. And the reason I did about a, little, about a pound and a half, because the recipes are designed for six to eight people. So I did a little bit extra because we have 10 people here tonight, 11 with, with uh, Chuck. Who likes to film these classes because he gets to eat. So we're going to put some green pepper. And when you're slicing the pepper, just go around the outside of it and you'll eliminate most of the seeds will be gone. So just go around the edge of it, okay? And we want to get all of the pieces, we want them to be chopped about the same size, okay? So they cook evenly. So, but you don't want them to be real small because you don't want it to be mushy when you cook. Okay, so we're going to get a good chop on that. Okay, so that's about half. You sprinkle that in. Okay, we got that, and I'm going to use, save this because we're going to use that on the next layer. And I have a red pepper. And if you don't like green pepper, some people can't digest green pepper. It gives them agita, so uh, just use, you know, the colored peppers. So give those the same, same size chop as we did before. Save half of it. If you really want to save time and yet, you could just chop it all together and just, you know, it'll be chopped when we're ready to go. Okay, so got those in. Uh, you could use uh, asparagus in here. If you, like, if you know asparagus is on sale and you want to use that, you could use that. I'm going to use broccoli because broccoli was on sale. Okay, so we got that in. Hi there. I have some peas. These are just frozen peas. Uh, you know, I'm just talking. We just started. So help yourself to the appetizer and get in there. So just take the peas right out of your freezer. You don't have to cook them or anything. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle some of those in. This is, this is a good way to get your kids to eat vegetables because the top layer is going to be sour cream and regatta cheese. So we'll put that on top, then we have sauce on top, then we're going to put mozzarella cheese on, it's going to go into the broiler, you know. So, so it's a good way that you could sneak the vegetables in for your kids. Okay, I have some broccoli here. And what, we, what you want to do with the broccoli is we want to just use the top part, okay. So you want to get it chopped up fairly well. You could also, if you, if, you, if you don't have fresh broccoli, you could throw in, if you have frozen broccoli in the freezer, just take it out of the freezer, defrost it a little bit, and just use the frozen broccoli in there. You could do that. Okay, so we've got a little layer of that. Get all those pieces in. Okay, so we got that in. We'll use that on the next half. Okay, does this have onion in it? Okay, I had onion over here, so I knew it must go somewhere. Okay, so <laughs> and I'm using just a regular, you know, yellow onion. You know how I am with red onions. If you've been here before, I can't, I can't peel them. I start crying. So we'll see what happens with this one. And again, if you had frozen onions, you know, you could buy them already peeled and chopped up. If you have them in your freezer, just stick them in there. Okay. And this will be in there long enough for the onions to, to cook a little bit so they won't be real, real tangy and tart for you. Because onions, when they cook, it's sweet. Because onions, have, they have a lot of sugar in them. Okay, sprinkle that in there. Just want to make sure that you distribute them evenly. Okay, so we got that on there. 
Okay, now I know I have some provolone cheese. Here it is. I'm going to put some provolone cheese in the middle and then start layering the next layer. This is just regular sliced provolone cheese. Just to give it an extra cheesy piece there. These are small slices, so I'm going to use. If you buy it at the counter, usually the slices are a lot bigger. Okay, get that in. That's for you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the next layer of pasta in here. This makes a, a nice hearty quite a bit. So should have got a deeper pan, but we'll get it in there. Okay, so we've got that layer in. Now we're gonna put the other half of the vegetables on. You could buy these uh, uh, green onion and peppers already chopped in the frozen section. So you could use those if you want. Actually, I use those a lot because they're a lot cheaper than buying the fresh. Okay, so get a layer of this on. Whoops. Well, if they have mice in here, they're going to find it tonight, so keep dropping stuff on the floor. <laughs> okay, I'll get the green pepper in. It's also a very colorful dish. This is something you could make. Uh, ahead of time, you could make it like the night before and put all the ingredients together, layer it, put it in your refrigerator, and then when you're ready to, to cook it, just take it out, let it come to room temperature a little bit, and then bake it. So you could do all of this way ahead of time. Okay. You could add black olives to this. You could add, you know, what it'd be like. If you wanted to make it a meat dish, you could put in some shredded chicken, you know, in one of the layers. I think I put in the recipe that if you wanted to make it heartier, you could put you could put uh, use a meat sauce for the where the spaghetti sauce is. Just use meat in there. I'm not going to put in this other half of onion because I put a lot. There's a lot of onion in the middle, so I don't want to overpower that. So we'll we'll just save that. Okay. Put some peas on. Okay. Get that in. Okay, what we're going to use now, what is that? Is that somebody's phone? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take some sour cream and some uh, ricotta cheese. I'm just going to mix that together. And we're going to dot the top with this. Okay, so it's, it's, going, to, it's going to be have kind of like a lasagna consistency. And what you want to do is make sure that, that you know, like it's spreadable. That's what we're doing. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. This again, I have 50% salt, 50% pepper, just mixed, and I leave it on the counter. And because every recipe you have says add salt and pepper, so might as well do it in one shot. Just going to add a little bit of that because we're going to add some Parmesan cheese, which is salty. So okay, so we'll lay that on, spread that over the top. Hmm? 
Yeah, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, yeah, you know, as long as you get it all in there. Does it say to put the sauce on first? There's always somebody reading the recipe. <laughs> 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 I didn't even read it. I was just told to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what's going to happen is the, the cheese is going to float down. You know, it'll, it'll melt when it's in the oven, and it's going to float down in there. Okay, so we've got that on. This is uh, regular old uh, spaghetti sauce. You use a jar or homemade, whatever you have. And we're going to spread that on top. Again, that's, that's going to float down. I'm going to take this spoon and I'm going to poke it through a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to top that with some shredded mozzarella cheese and Parmesan cheese. So again, in here I have Parmesan cheese. I'll leave this out when you eat this, and then you could put on more if you want. When you go. Okay, some shredded mozzarella cheese. And you could use you could use uh, Asiago cheese or you know whatever kind of cheese you like. Shredded, you can use shredded provolone if you like that on top. But whatever you use, you got to use a lot because I like a lot of cheese. I don't know why I keep saying that, but I don't eat this stuff. You have to eat it. <laughs> you know. There. That on there. We're all set. So you could make this up to this point, like the night before or, or a couple of days ahead. Leave it in your refrigerator. And then when you're ready to bake it, just take it out, put some foil on it. It's going to just tent the foil over it a little bit, not real tight. Okay, that's done. That goes in the oven. This oven's so nice and clean, probably won't look like that when that thing cooks. It's probably going to go over, but but I'm sure some of you will help me stay and clean the oven. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so we got the entree in. Now what I'm going to do, let me get cleaned up a little bit here. I'm going to, uh, uh, before we get on to the salad, I'm going to chop up the fruit. I'm going to show you how to macerate that, okay, because we want that, the fruit to absorb that sambuca, okay? So I'm going to get some of this out of the way, bring the fruit over. I made a mess over here. Okay. I'm going to use I'm going to use strawberries, blueberries and bananas. That's what I'm going to use. And here I have some sambuca. And have anise seeds, okay, that I'm going to put in there for a little bit. Um, I'm also going to use uh, pound cake. Uh, I always tell people in the class, if you want to find a place to get pound cake that's really inexpensive, is to go to the Dollar Tree next to Walmart and go way in the back. They have pound cake for a buck, okay? So if you happen to be down there, just get, you know, four or five, stick them in your freezer, and you'll always have a quick dessert. Okay, you guys are lucky tonight because I made a pound cake. Ooh, <laughs> and you know I don't like to bake, <laughs> but uh, do you remember where the name pound cake comes from when they first made it? Had a pound of butter, pound of sugar, pound of eggs, and pound of flour. 
That's, a, that's how the name pound cake came from. So, in case, you ever, in case you're ever on Jeopardy, you know. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in some blueberries. Good. I'm going to take two bananas. You have to work quick with the bananas because you don't want them to turn brown. Does anybody not like any of this fruit that's going in here? Too bad. <laughs> Be an extra dessert for somebody. Okay, so I'm just going to, you know, chop these up. You don't want really big pieces, you know, so I'm going to kind of quarter them a little bit. And make sure you get banana. Don't use bananas that are real soft, okay? Because they'll just dissolve in the alcohol. Then you'll have a banana slushy. Okay, put that in there. And you could use any kind of fruit that you like. It doesn't have to be these. You could use raspberries. You could use uh, apples. You could use mangoes. You know, pineapple. Okay, I'm going to get some strawberries in here. These are nice, huge, big strawberries. And again, you want to cut all the fruit about the same size. You don't have to be real gentle with it. Just throw everything in a bowl. Okay, a couple more. And again, you could do this the day before, okay? Because all that, all that is going to happen is the fruit's just going to absorb more of the flavoring, okay? So you, so you could have this in your refrigerator and just ready to go when you're ready for dessert. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the Sambuca. And I don't think I need all of that. I just want to make sure you get all of the fruit mixed in with that. That they've never had this, you guys, right? There's a little in here. You can just share it. I don't have any straws, but <laughs> just, there you go. <laughs> That's right. It's good. Okay, so we got we got that part done. What I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to put this in the refrigerator and let it let it sit until we're ready to use it. Clean this up. Hmm? Yeah, I, I would leave the If you're going to do it like a couple hours ahead, that's okay. But if you're going to do it like the day before, I would leave the bananas until the end. Okay? And let, you know, you could do it if you have like fruit that's hard. Are you mixing that with the Coke? <laughs> Remember, you, you, this is a learning. <laughs> Wow, wow, well, as in good? <laughs> as in good, huh? <laughs> Usually in, in most Italian households, if you go to an Italian restaurant and you order coffee, you, you know, they'll usually have you, uh, they'll put a shot of Sambuca in it, you know? Or they'll, they'll give you Sambuca in a little glass and they float coffee beans in it, you know, so... Supposed to be educating you people. See, there you go. Okay, so I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way, and then we're going to go on to the salad. 
So we'll be... So we already have, we're well on our way, we have half the dessert made. We've got the entrees in the oven. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the salad. I told you this is going to be a very, very quick meal. Okay. I'm going to change, change that recipe just a little bit. Okay, I have some fresh, fresh mozzarella here. Okay, you can need to get it. This way, make sure you get the fresh. Don't get the, the kind that looks like a rubber tire, okay? <laughs> because, you know, the, the kind that you shred, you know, don't get that kind. It'll say fresh on it if you, if you get it. If you go to Wegmans or, or Tops in one of those stores, you can usually find it in the water. It's in the water, so make, but this was just wrapped, okay? So I'm going to use Roma tomatoes. And again, this is going to have a, a, a lemon dressing on it. We're going to use a, a lemon fresh lemon juice, a little salt and pepper, and olive oil, okay? Oh, you know what? I'm not doing this right now. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get our soup going. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay, go to the top, right above the salad. <laughs> I want to get the soup going so, we, so you guys can eat that. Okay, so let me get the, the heat on here. Okay, let me get all my soup ingredients. Have another onion. Going to use some diced tomatoes. This is uh, Swiss chard. You could use Swiss chard. You could use kale. You could use any kind of green that you like. Okay, uh, Swiss chard holds up really well when you cook it. And this is you can get Swiss chard either red or yellow or white. Okay, this is just the white. Just a, a, a word of caution: if you use the red when you put it in the soup. A lot of the soup will turn red. The liquid will turn red, okay, because there's a dye. It's not a dye, but it'll change the color. Okay, again, we're going we're gonna to start with some olive oil in the bottom of this pot. Just enough to just coat the bottom, because so we're going to start adding our vegetables in here. Okay, I'm going to start, I don't know if it's on there, but I'm going to put a, little, a couple of red pepper flakes in there, just to keep our theme going, <laughs> you know. And you want to put them in at the beginning when the oil is cool because it'll start infusing with the oil. Okay, that's how you infuse it. If you want to make garlic oil, put the garlic cloves in the oil when it's cold, then bring it up to temperature and then shut it off. Okay, and just let it sit. Okay, so we get our onion. Oops, that'll work. <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> we're gonna shred it. Okay. Hope that wasn't the fire alarm. Okay, so we're going to get our onion going. <laughs> and again, you don't have to make these real small because, you know, it's a soup. You want to see the vegetables in it. And I have the, I have the, the pot on, like, medium-high. Ooh, they're flying all over the place. Okay. So we get those in a pot. That's what you want to hear. You don't want them to burn, so give them a quick stir. I have some celery and carrots that I cleaned just before I came. And again, you don't want little teeny pieces. Okay, those go in. And a couple carrots. And again, I'm going to cut, just cut these in like half moons. As long as I can continue to see. Can you smell those onions? Okay, those go in. 
And that's going to form the base for our soup as soon as I add the garlic. Okay, I have some garlic here. And I'm going to put in maybe two, depending on, you know, how big, depending on how big they are. These are a good size. Uh, just a, a heads up, if you have people who don't like pieces of garlic in their food, just put the garlic in whole. When you, when you smash the clove, okay, you take the skin off. Okay, and give it a, a smash. Just put it in just like that. And then when, you, when it, you get all the flavor of the garlic in there, take the whole piece out. You'll have the garlic flavor, but not the garlic. Okay. Take the little end off. Give this one a smash. If you give it a good smack, the, the skin comes right off. Okay. And I'm just going to, you could either use a garlic press or... Chop it, or you can uh, get the garlic that's already minced in a little jar. You could use that. Okay, you want to put the garlic in on top of the vegetables because you don't want the garlic to burn. Okay, so we got that in. And what you're looking for is, is the, uh, the onions to look like translucent. You notice that they're not cooked all the way through. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this because the salt is going to draw the water out and they'll cook faster. Okay? The only time you don't want to do that is if you're using mushrooms. Because if you put mushrooms in there and you put the salt in with the mushrooms, it'll draw the water out of the mushrooms and they'll steam. They will never brown. Okay? So don't put any salt in with mushrooms until the very end when you get a nice color on the mushrooms. Okay, get that going. Okay, I'm going to chop up this kale. You just want to get that tough end off. And uh, this, this part's kind of woody, but uh, it's not too bad, so I'm just going to chop this up. Okay, if you, if you want to remove that, just, just take that whole stem out. You can just grab it like this, and it comes right off. Okay, so you could just hold it, fold it in half, and just pull the stem off. It's kind of like you know where to cut it when, you, when you're doing asparagus, where to break it. And again, we're not going to blanch this. We're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to throw it in. Uh, you could use, use the same thing. Use spinach. You could use kale. You could use uh, collard greens, mustard greens, any kind of greens that you like. You could buy them already chopped. In most grocery stores, you can get a bag of greens. Uh, that you can get mixed greens and just put the whole mixed greens in there. Okay, this looks like a lot, but you know it's going to cook right down. Okay, we throw that in. So get that all in there. Okay, give it a stir so it mixes in with the vegetables because the steam will start to make it go down. I don't know if you can see up on the mirror, but it's already wilting quite a bit. Again, we want to put in a little, little more salt so it helps that wilt. Okay, I'm going to use a can of uh, regular uh, diced tomatoes. That's going to go in. And Some white wine, okay? This is a Chardonnay. I like Chardonnay, so that's what it is. <laughs> Use whatever kind of white wine you like. Just make sure when, if you're cooking with a wine, make sure you get a wine that you would drink. Don't get that $2 Thunderbird stuff from the guy on the corner, okay? <laughs> because it won't taste good. Because this is going to cook down a little bit. So we're going to throw that in. How much does it say to put in? Oh, that's about a cup. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we got that in. Got our tomatoes ready to go. Okay, got pepper flakes in. I'm going to use uh, kidney beans. 
just regular kidney beans, and just some reduced sodium chicken broth. And again, at the end, what I'm going to add is uh, a little pasta. You can use whatever kind of little pasta you like. If you want to use little shells or uh, uh, you have spaghetti, you want to break up the spaghetti and throw, you know, that cook that. But again, I pre-cooked this. Okay, so uh, if you want to, what you can do, and, and a lot of people do it, is they'll make the soup, then put the pasta in raw, you know, uncooked, and just let it cook for about 10 minutes. But this is just easier. It speeds it up. That, that way, I don't like that because what happens is it gets, the soup gets very starchy, you know, but if you eat it right away, it's okay. But if you're going to let it sit around, then it get, to me, it gets real starchy. So I, so I don't use that. Okay, so we have the chicken broth. You can use this or homemade, whatever you have. And I, we put a, uh, I usually don't put a whole lot of salt and stuff, so this, but we did salt this up pretty good. So we want to make sure that you use a low sodium stock. Okay, put that in. And what I like to do when I buy stock is to add some water to it because uh, to me it's kind of heavy for a soup. So I'm going to add maybe about a half a can of water. Because again, we're going to add the tomatoes and we're not going to drain those. Okay, get that in. I'm going to add the tomatoes. And you could, these aren't seasoned. But you could use seasoned tomatoes, you could use uh, stewed tomatoes, you can use whatever kind of tomatoes you have, happen to have in your cupboard. The only thing you don't want to use is like a crushed tomato because it's, that, it, that's like a paste. Okay. So just throw those in. Okay. Two cans of beans. And you could use, if you want to use white beans, you could use white beans. Does it say one can or two? One? Yeah. <laughs> I had two in the cupboard. I was throwing everything in the box, so that's what you're going to get. Okay, I'm just going to drain off that liquid a little bit. Now remember, again, that this is kind of salty, too, so you want to be careful. And if you really don't like that stuff, but of course it's going to be in the soup, so it'll help, it'll help to thicken it up a little bit. If you want this soup to be thicker, what you can do is take, take one of the cans of beans, take a fork, and mash it. Okay, just smash the beans in the can, and that'll make it like pasty. And that'll help thicken up the soup for you if you like it real thick. Okay. And then just throw the other can in whole. that going. I'm going to wait to add these a little bit and I'm going to wait to add the pasta. Okay. Now we're going to start doing the salad. We're going to bring that up to a boil and let that, just let that simmer a, a couple of minutes and make sure that all the stuff in there is, gets cooked. Because the only thing you want to make sure is that you don't want the carrots to be raw but you want them to have a little bit of a bite. Okay. Okay, so the soup is all ready to go. All we need to do is add the beans and the pasta, and that's all set. So now we're going to start working on the salad again. Back to the salad. Again, you can see that's a very, very easy soup to make. Uh, this, is, this is a soup that freezes extremely well. Just don't put the pasta in it. Okay? You can make it. You make, you'll see how much this makes. It makes a lot. Uh, put it in little containers, freeze it. And then when you're ready to use it, just cook up some pasta and throw it in there. Okay, and you're all set to go. So I have some Roma tomatoes. And, and I just like these because they're, they're nice and hearty. And uh, this time of the year, most of the tomatoes are lousy. So... We'll see how many we get. So when you cut these, you want to make sure you get the seeds out. So, so again, let me move this out of the way. So you can see I'm going to go around the edge of the tomato. Okay. 
because all the seeds are in that middle part. So you have almost all of the seeds out. Or what you can do, cut the tomato in half and then squeeze it like this over the garbage bowl and the seeds will come out. Okay, that's just so that you have almost all the seeds out. That's just a little messier for me because I'll end up with seeds all over the counter and floor. And so. so then you just want to get them cut up. Again, if you were making a regular caprese salad, you would slice the tomatoes. That's kind of a nice salad to have during the summer because the tomatoes are nice and fresh. So you, you take the sliced tomatoes, you layer that with slices of mozzarella, fresh basil. I have to put the bowl back. Okay, so that all goes in there. And you don't want them real teeny, teeny little pieces. You, know, you want to be able to, to see the tomato. You don't want tomato sauce. Okay. Check our soup here. Looks good. I always have to make sure I have the right burner on. Okay, into the bowl. And do a couple more tomatoes. And then I know it doesn't have it on your recipe, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cucumber in here, okay, just to give it a little extra crunch. And also, at this time of the year, if you're making the salad, the tomatoes are real expensive, and, and putting the cucumber in is a way to stretch it, okay? It just gives you a little more bang for your buck. Okay, so I'm going to do one more. Again, you want to be careful with the salt and pepper on this because what's going to happen is when you put the salt in, it's going to, it's going to draw all the moisture out and it'll get very watery. So we're going, to, we're going to not do that until the very end. Okay, so I've got enough in there. And take a uh, regular cucumber. What I like to, I like to take off part of the skin. You could actually use a peeler to do this faster. Or you could use a seedless cucumber, works just as well. But I'll show you how to take the seeds out of this very easily. Okay, just take, cut the cucumber in half. And let me get a spoon. Just take, a, take, take your spoon and just go right down the middle of it. There you have all the seeds out. This is an easy way to make, uh, if you wanted to make a real quick hors d'oeuvre, do this, cut the regular cook, cut this in half, fill this with like a, a, like a cream cheese spread, you know, cream cheese with the vegetables in it. You can just buy it right at the, where they sell the cream cheese. And then you just cut them in little slices and you have a real quick hors d'oeuvre. Okay, so you get this cut up. Woo! And if you buy the English cucumbers, you just, you know, the ones that are just supposed to be seedless, you could just hollow it out a little bit, just enough to make a channel where you can put the cheese in, because those are about this long. So you, you have enough hors d'oeuvres, you know, you get about, about 10 to 12 out of one cucumber. Okay, so it's a cheap, cheap uh, hors d'oeuvre. And then people think you were so smart to figure that out. Yeah. You could uh, fill it with that cream cheese mixture and crumple a little uh, uh, bacon over it, crispy bacon. Just put that over the top of it. Okay, so we got that in. And we're going to chop up our fresh mozzarella.
What do you want to chop this? You want to chop this? Over here, I want to check, I got to check the pasta. <laughs> yeah. So I got to check the pasta because I, I can smell it. Okay, what, what you want to do is just, uh, you know, cut it like this and then just cut it in chunks mm -hmm. and just throw it in there. There you go. Okay, here's the next Top Chef. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, took the foil off that. So it's going to go in for a bit. It's you know get nice and warm. So a couple minutes, and then I'm going to put the put it under the broiler so it gets a little brown on top. I'm going to check our soup again. This is Jennifer Brown, my wonderful assistant over here, cutting up fresh mozzarella for our salad. <laughs> okay, so this is looking good. I'm going to add the beans into our soup. Again, this is just about, you know, it's, it's simmering right now, the soup. So that's what I want to get to that point. Because I'm going to add the pasta in because the pasta, remember, I, only, I, I didn't cook it all the way through. So we've got to let the pasta finish cooking. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to put that in. See, now you can do a little commercial. You said, and I helped. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all set with that. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to chop up some fresh basil. And again, when you take it, your stuff home, you know, take it out of the package, uh, you know, clean it up and then put it in a paper towel and stick it in the baggie and you get a longer shelf life out of it. So uh, when you make a regular caprese salad, what you do is take the leaves and put it in between the mozzarella and the fresh cheese. Okay, so let me take some of this. Take off some nice big leaves. Okay, I'm just... Push it all together and just get it all chopped up. What you can do is tear the leaves if you don't want to cut it. Just shred them. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Looks good. Now what we have to do for the salad is just make the dressing. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to make a lemon dressing. Of, so what you do if the lemons are hard and you don't think they're going to give you a lot of juice, just either put them in your microwave for 10 seconds, okay, or you, you squeeze them, okay, or just roll them on the counter. And you could feel it start to soften up. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I don't like to whisk, you know, they always tell you to whisk the oil in. I just use a shaker jar and just shake it all up. So it's, it's a lot less time consuming. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get the lemon juice in here. What you do is cut the lemon in half, hold it this side up in your hand, and that'll catch most of the seeds. Okay, so we'll need, need juice from both of these to make our dressing. And you could make this kind of a dress, this citrus dressing. If you like oranges, you can use oranges or you could use limes. You know, you could use any kind of citrus you want.
I happen to like lemons, so I use, I use that quite a bit. We use, we use this on regular salads. You could make this dressing and marinate chicken in it. You know, so you makes a nice little dressing for the chicken. Okay, I'm just going to put just a little bit of salt and pepper in here. Okay. I'm going to add some olive oil. It's usually about a two to one ratio, uh, one citrus, one, you know, the vinegar or whatever you're using, and then two of the olive oil. Depends on how citrusy you want it. Okay. So just put it in here, or if you, you know, you want to be top chef, just whisk it in there, you know, and just do your thing. But this is done already, <laughs> and I don't have to wash a whisk, <laughs> which half the time I can't find. So, you know. Okay, so we got that in. So our salad is basically done. Let's see our soup here. Okay, what I'm going to need, let that sit a bit. What I'm going to need is somebody to taste this to see. Imagine that. See if this has like enough, soup, see, uh, you know, salt and pepper or yeah, everybody's taste is different. I don't really like a whole lot of salt, so I don't. A little salt? Okay. Okay, what we're going to do, what I'm going to do with this also is when you have the soup, I'll put the Parmesan cheese over there and you could sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top, okay? Or if you're making a whole thing, you could just put the, you could put Parmesan cheese right in, right in the soup, okay? So you could do that. So we are just about ready. Very easy soup to make. Let me check the pasta. Okay. I'm going to put that under the broiler now, so somebody remind me that it's under the broiler. Okay, what we're going to do now is you're going to have soup, and then by, that, by the time you finish having your soup, uh, push start, it'll help. <laughs> <laughs> I like my gas stove, just put that baby on. So... Uh, I'm going to move the soup over here, you know, as usual, and you can, guys can help yourself. And we'll take a little break while you eat, and then we'll come back and we'll be ready for the entree. Now, this is boiling now, so just be careful when you... There you go, bowls are over there, spoons are over there. I'll put the Parmesan cheese over there. Excuse me, the waitress is not here. <laughs> there you go. Okay, everybody had their soup. There's plenty there, the soup's gotta go, so you'll be able to take some home. We can find enough containers. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the, the pasta out of the oven, okay, because it was under the broiler for a while. And you can see, as I, you know, I told you before, you get a nice little crust on the top because of the, all the cheese is on top. So I'll make sure that this is off. It's all off. So this is ready to go. So I'm going to set this up over there again and put the salad over there. So grab yourself a scoop of the salad and a uh, scoop of the pasta. And then while you're doing that, I'm going to start getting dessert ready. Now what I have to do is I have a pound cake here. So what I'm going to do while you're eating is I'm going to cube that up and put a little bit in each of the dessert cups. Okay. So we'll get started on that and then I'll show you how to put the rest of it together. Very simple. Okay, so we're ready to eat. We'll get stuff going. Okay, I just want to remind uh, to people who are watching that if they want the recipes for everything we're doing here uh, and are interested in the cookbook that I have, you can check the end of the tape has my email address on it. You can just email me 
and I will send you the recipes and information about the cookbook. Okay, you guys ready to eat? I'll move this over. Okay, what I did while you guys were eating, I took the pound cake and I just cubed it up and put it in the bottom of the uh, little cups. These are just little uh, rocks glasses, little nine ounce cups. If you wanted to get real fancy, you could put them in like a, like a goblet or a, a champagne glass or, you know, depending on how well you like your company. So uh, you can do that. What we're going to do for the cream filling in this is I'm going to use some ricotta cheese and uh, little pudding cups. Okay, we're going to make full pastry cream. Okay, so uh, we're going to mix these together with a little bit of sugar. We're going to start layering that with the fruit that we have in the refrigerator that's been macerating with the Sambuca. Okay, <laughs> It'll, it won't taste as strong as when you, when you were chugging it in the back of the room, I saw you. <laughs> so I'm going to put this in, if you don't have a processor, you can just put it in a, a, a bowl and, uh, and use a hand mixer. Get all, you just want to make sure that it's uh, mixed together well. Okay, so put that in. This is a, a, like a full pastry cream that you could use for a lot of different toppings. You could use it for like a cake filling or anything. It's just, it's, you could add a little vanilla to it. You could add a little uh, lemon extract, you know, whatever you want to add. I'm going to put in a little bit of sugar just to sweeten that up a little bit, not too much. Okay, and then we're just going to process this until it's nice and smooth. Okay, just give it a stir. Make sure you get it around the edges. And then at this point, you could flavor this with whatever you wanted. I mean, you could add vanilla, you could add uh, lemon extract, uh, orange extract, whatever, you know, you wanted to add to that. You could add some Sambuca in it. You could, you could add, <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever you want to add, just to flavor it up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start layering the dessert. Get that out of the way. Don't that. Okay, we're going to get the... And by now, it's like all, it's got a little syrupy on the bottom. Okay, I, I could smell the Sambuca. I did put a few of the anise seeds in there uh, while you guys were eating on the break there. So, uh, so you'll see little seeds in there. That's anise seeds. Okay, that's what the Sambuca is made from. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take this and take our spoon. And we're going to put a layer of this in. Again, you could make this, this cream up way ahead. You know, you'll have the pound cake if you buy it. It's obviously going to be made. You macerate your fruit. Everything that we had in this dinner tonight can be made ahead of time. Okay? Uh, because, you know, my philosophy is if you're going to have company over, you want to enjoy your company. You don't want to stay in the kitchen. And God help you, you don't want them in the kitchen with you. So, you know, so you can get everything ahead, and all you got to do is heat it up and throw it in there. I shouldn't say that. I don't like people in my kitchen. I like to cook by myself. You know, I don't like... <laughs> people always offer to help, you know. Get out of here. Okay, so we got that in. Now we're going to put some of the fruit on top. And again, you're just going to pop that on there. And again, you, again, you use whatever kind of fruit you like. If, you, if, you, if the fruit gets real, real juicy when you macerate it, what you can do is put the, put the fruit in first, because then the pound cake will absorb all the liquid. Well, I'm going to load these up because no, we're not going to take this home, so... 
again, I have 12 here. So, you know, it makes, you know, the recipe says six to eight, but it makes more than that. So. When you made your pound cake, did you do the pound of sugar? Pound of That's how it originally was. How did I make it? Uh, Betty Crocker box. <laughs> it said pound cake mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I don't. I don't like to bake. I don't. No. They they keep laughing because you know every time I make a dessert, it's either got pound cake, ice cream, or <laughs> whatever in it. So, you know. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take some cream. And again, if you have Cool Whip and you want to use that or whatever kind of whip topping, and you don't want people to know that it's whip topping, just add a little flavoring to it. Just put in some lemon zest, or a teaspoon of vanilla, or a little lemon extract, or some shaved chocolate, and they'll never know it's not homemade whipped cream. So. Okay, so we're just going to... And if you wanted to, you could put a little shaved chocolate on top or... This is the only part of the meal you'll see me eat. Okay. Well, that was our cooking plan for today. I hope those of you in class enjoy eating the meal prepared, learned a few new cooking shortcuts, and will try these recipes at home. So those of you watching at home, I'd like to thank you for being with us and encourage you to join us in class. And remember, from my family to yours, always make time for family and friends by sharing a great meal around your kitchen table.